in an interview with Coindesk Japan, Circle co-founder and CEO Jeremy Allaire said the company is considering issuing a stable coin in Japan under new rules. Emily, you've been following the story closely. Talk to us about the new legislation that came into effect on June 1st. Sure. So Coindesk Japan, our colleagues at Coindesk Japan uh, interviewed Jeremy Allaire about Circle and some of their thoughts about the Japanese market. And basically, you know, what, what Jeremy Allaire told them is that Circle is considering issuing a stable coin in Japan. Now, on the surface, this might not seem like such a bold statement. Okay, he's considering it. He's looking at it. But it's actually very significant because until recently that would have been impossible and now it is possible because Japan and I think a lot of people don't know this stable coins were essentially not allowed in Japan until very very recently and that's recently changed now it's not going to be easy to do this there's a, a quite a process to go through but you know circle is is one of the players that I think sees the market opportunity in Japan whether or not they're going to issue uh, a stable coin in Japan remains an open question and there's a lot of uh, hoops that they would have to jump through in order to do it but I think the fact that we have such a major player now exploring the Japanese market really sort of signals the beginning of a new era in Japan, which is like the potential, the beginning of the stablecoin era, which has not been the case up until now. Yeah. So how, how essentially do we know anything about how it would work? Or I, I assume this is a, a stable coin that's based on the yen, correct? I, I, I mean, they, they must think that there's some demand or there will be a demand for it. Well, I think, you know, I think, you know, Jeremy Lair obviously was, you know, careful and, and there's not, we don't know exactly what Circle's plans are again, or if they're even going to do this. But I think now there is the possibility for both yen-based stablecoins and dollar-based stablecoins. Now, I think from the Japanese perspective, what I'm hearing is that there is some interest in having a yen-based stablecoin because that's just something that could potentially just increase the usage of JPY. So I think just from a policy perspective, I think there's definitely interest in that and just sort of, you know, creating sort of like easier transactions, you know, in, in, in sort of the blockchain crypto world via JPY uh, stablecoin. So I think that is part of the goals for Japan here in doing this. I mean, it's really notable here that at a time when, you know, the US, for example, I mean, there's been so many stablecoin bills, right? We're always talking about them on the show. And we have yet to see one become a reality. And, you know, it's interesting that Japan would sort of choose now to kind of open up to stablecoin. In fact, they're one of the first countries to do so, clearly because they see some sort of opportunity here, you know, rather than risk. However, it's worth saying that this is going to be a very, very strict sort of regime. Like for for example, um, you know, say, say you have a stable coin, Japan is requiring that like the money that backs that stable coin is basically kept in Japan, right? So they, they want, you know, total one to one redemption. So I think it's fair to say that there are some stable coins, which will remain nameless major stable coins out there that probably will not make it into the Japanese market, because I don't think they would agree to such terms. And you know, one there's that, only certain type. Yeah, I mean, you, that, you can, you can name one them. That rhymes with feather. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but there are you know there are other so other rules in terms of like only certain types of institutions can issue stable coins. So you know, again, not going to be easy. This is generally the case with Japanese crypto regulation: is that like you know they're very forward thinking, they're very welcoming, but they're very tough. So I think that's really the question: is like how this is going to play out and what kind of players will make it into the Japanese market. But I do think Circle statement is definitely significant. You know, zooming out, Emily, it sound, this sounds very similar to what we were just talking about with Yat in regards to Hong Kong being very welcoming to Web3, but also having quite strict regulation. Can you tell us about the broader uh, Web3 perspective uh, in Japan outside of stablecoins? What's happening there? Yeah, I think Hong Kong and, and, and Tokyo are, are, are quite similar in a lot of ways because both of them, and again, it's so different from the U.S. I mean, when you come to Tokyo um, and you see, so I was, you know, at a, a crypto conference in Kyoto. There were, I don't know, the organizer said there was something like 9,000 people there, you know, mostly from Asia. I mean, just really like a lot of energy and optimism, a very different vibe from, from the U.S. And, you know, you have the Japanese government, you have the Japanese prime minister actually give an opening address at this crypto conference. He didn't really talk about crypto, but still, can you imagine President Biden giving an opening address at a crypto conference? I find it slightly hard to imagine, right? So just on the symbolic level, Japan is kind of all in, right? I mean, they're just really, you know, promoting Web3 and welcoming Web3. 
I guess the 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 other side of it is that um, it is strict, and I think you know, for example, the stablecoin rules are strict. There are other areas where it's very strict. I think it's a little it's difficult to operate an exchange in Japan. Coinbase didn't make it. Kraken didn't make it. They both left the Japanese market. There are various reasons for that, but I think you know it's it's generally known that this is difficult. I think there are also some tax obstacles that remain. You know, Japan recently did relax this one very onerous tax restrict tax restriction on unrealized gains, but you do still hear a lot of complaints about high taxes for crypto. So it's not exactly the easiest place to do crypto, but like Hong Kong, it's clear and it's welcoming, and I think we will see more. Um, crypto businesses kind of looking to Japan and Hong Kong in the future. How will this affect CBDCs in Japan? You know, it's really interesting question. I mean, there's definitely talk of a digital yen, but it's not the same kind of like animated. Animated is a very um, euphemistic term uh, debate that we see in the United States, right? Like, I, you, you don't you don't hear you know presidential candidates saying that you know this is gonna uh, you know this is going to be a surveillance mechanism. I mean, you're not really. They don't I, have I, Florida I, I, and Japan. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's not like there's not a Japanese version of you know DeSantis Florida. saying that this is a yeah. surveillance instrument. So so I I, I don't get the sense right now that there's the same kind of divide between, you know, CBDCs versus stable coins and the two of them, you know, can't exist. I mean, I think if if the Japanese government thought that, then they, you know, I don't think the the, the road for stable coins would be as open as it is now. But I think that remains to be seen. I mean, I think we, it's, it's unclear exactly what is going to happen with the digital yen, but I don't get the sense that they are in this sort of like stark competition in the way that many frame it in, in the United States. Emily, thank you for that. It's always a pleasure zooming out and getting the global perspective on this industry with you. 